Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We can sit you down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to tempt you with a cash offer on the table. You walk away with it, no risk. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say to you, okay. take a gamble and place those same goods into an auction and hope to get more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Bury in Lancashire. There's a huge crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They're determined to do business. They want to walk away with cash or gamble and go to auction. But either way, they want the real deal. It's the first deal of the day, and will Ian get his you-know-whats in a twist over these candlesticks? Where did you get them? I actually bought them at a car boot in Bolton. A car boot in yeah. Bolton. So maybe I should come up to some car boots <laughs> in Bolton. Maybe. <laughs> and a long time ago, or just recently? About, about eight months ago, I'd eight say. Eight months yeah. ago. And you're selling them already? Well, the reason why I bought them in the first place was to make a bit of extra money. Oh, I see. So you bought them very well. I, I would say so. You say so. Well, they're very unusual, I must say. And what is lovely is the bases are marked, the top is marked. So that I like because both the pieces have got the same date letter on them, okay. you know, which is very helpful. They're Birmingham uh, 1913, which is very good, you know, nice period. And I love the squareness, plainness of them. You know, I like simple silver. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not very simple with my jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably thinking this one's crazy. But when it comes to silver, I love very plain, gentle lines, you know, neat, neat pieces. I do like this wood and silver mix. And have you any idea what they're really worth? Um, a little you have bit. a rough idea? A rough idea, yes. Let's see what we have here. Um, <clears throat> what should I give you for that? <laughs> I like it. So, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. I would like more for them, if possible. You'd like more for yeah. them? A lot more? Not a lot more. Not a lot more. Not, not a great deal more. Not a great you, deal. I mean, you, you're getting warm. I'm getting warmer yeah. to your figure yeah. that you have in mind. Yeah. Well, I think it's a very good offer. Uh, I would say you'd probably get in that region if you took it to an auction or something like that, 300. OK. Cannot squeeze some more out of you, Ian. Uh, <laughs> I've just come in here, Michael, because I think we're at a crucial decision time. I can tell you that the independent valuers and the auctioneer have two opinions here. 250 to 3, 300 to 400. Now, I'm going to mention this, and it will not change Ian's mind. I know you bought these in a car boot sale or in a... Uh, uh, where did you buy them? It was a, it was a bit upmarket from a car boot OK, sale. so it was a... <laughs> it, was, it was a Brocanti. <laughs> it was a Brocanti open-air fair. Yeah, something like and that. And tell us what you paid for them. <laughs> don't, paid, you don't be ashamed don't of it. Don't be ashamed. You know, everybody makes a profit. <laughs> yes. You paid thirty-five. Okay. Thirty-five paid pounds. Thirty-five pounds. So that's someone brilliant. was very fortunate. A brilliant buy at thirty-five yeah. pounds. I'm normally saying to Ian, get more money down, mate. I'm saying, realistic. Good profit to you. Why not do the deal and let Ian earn? <laughs> you heard what David said. You know. If you want the 400 and you want to go and gamble it at auction, entirely up to you. Nobody's squeezing your hand arm to take it, you know, it's entirely up to you. But I think it's a very good offer. Ian, I think I'll accept your offer. You take the offer, yeah. you're happy with 300, you're sure? Yeah. Sure. Shall we shake on it? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for Thank bringing you them along. I love you. them. Thank you. That was a great profit, Michael. Will Ian do as well? We'll find out later in the programme. Right, let's head Hi. off to Cheryl's Hello. table. What's this little 
horse and carriage you've brought along today? It's something what um, I found in the safe. In your it, safe? In my safe at and, all. And you don't know how it got there? Well, my husband, family, it's from way back, you know. Uh -huh. So it's, it's come from your husband's family? Yeah. And do you know where they got it from? I don't or? know, I've no idea, no. And if I just quickly have a look here... Um, and all the clasp has gone and... It's quite unusual, isn't it? And there's a lot of yeah. work in it. Yeah. So it's silver, but it's not English silver. Look at the little wheels that yeah. turn. How cute's that? Um, it's not English silver, which collectors like English silver. Yeah. They're not yeah. as keen on continental silver. People like to date things by the marks. They like to look at the mark and yeah. say, this is from whatever date, whatever town. And although it is very cute and it's very interesting, if this had been English silver, it would have probably been worth three times what this yeah. is. Yeah. So just, just, just to let you know that. the difference. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, yeah. what a little set of stamps can make is an awful lot. Mm. But it's very unusual. I've, n I've never seen anything like it. No. It's, it's in miniature form almost, and those wheels turning yeah. are what makes it quite appealing, really. Um, whether or not there's like a hook here, it would have had maybe some Rain. ribbon or, yeah. you know, twine or something for the reins. Mm -hmm. um, but cute, all the legs are still there because it's very fine. It's yeah. lots of little detail on it. I don't think it's the most valuable thing in the world. We'll get the cash out and uh, see what you think. OK. Right. Okie dokie. How about £20? A bit more. <laughs> Why does everybody always say a bit more? <laughs> No-one's ever said yes. <laughs> How about £30 for this dinky object? A bit more. I'm a going on holiday. More. You want to go on holiday? Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure if I can stretch <laughs> to a holiday. No, a bit of extra spend. <laughs> um, right. My final five pounds in the in the bundle. Thirty-five. That's what it's worth to me. Is that your final offer? That's my final offer. Oh, that's okay. Then. Is that okay? Yeah. You sure you don't want to go to auction? No. 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 We've got a deal then. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Across the dealer's den, Corrie's got a novelty TP teapot. It's designed by someone we hear a lot about on this programme. Can you guess who? It's shaped like an Indian red Indian TP. Yeah. And the lid is like the top of the TP. So we're going to take the lid off very, very carefully and have a look at it. And it's got a maple leaf and it's got this sort of almost like a totem pole. A, a kind of weird witch doctor figure here and caribou mm -hmm. and a red Indian chief with his feathers and he's the spout yes and underneath it says Clarice Cliff Newport Pottery Company England and then it says greetings from Canada it does and mm -hmm. that kind of gives us a hint so the whole all these motifs yeah. are to do with Canada Yes. So whether it was made in Newport and sent to Canada to be sold and brought back... I don't know. I don't know either. I really don't know. I think it's quite extraordinary. I mean, it's wonderful. Where did you get it from? It was my grandma's, um, and she had it for a long time, hidden away in a cupboard, and then she gave it to my mother, and she didn't really have it on display. It was tucked away in her cupboard, and then she gave it to me, and it's been in my cupboard for a long time. So it spent a lot of time in the dark? Yes, it has. It has? Yes. Clara's Cliff is quite collectible. I'm mm -hmm. sure you know this. And this is a pattern I have not seen. Let's put some money on the table. It's 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, how does that feel to you? I was told it was worth um, a bit more than that. Well, let's try a bit more. We've got 370 on the table. Could I just ask my friend um, Richard? See the man standing behind you? Yes, please. Go on. More, please. <laughs> more. 
390. Could you just go a bit more? A bit more. If I was to take away the 40, and you've got 400 on the table now, would we have a deal? <laughs> 450. To get 450, you're well over 500 at auction. So if I put 20 down, I'm getting, I'm getting to the end now. What do you think? One more. Could you go one more, please, Corrie? I'm going to put down my very last £10. OK. 430. Would we have a deal? Yes. Yes. Deal. We have a deal. deal. Also coming up, has Ian met his match in the bling stakes? I know. You see? Unbelievable. You see, so... And can he focus enough to buy this magnifier from its flash owner? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Berry in Lancashire. How do you do? I'm David, and you're... Anne. Anne. Yeah. Uh, Anne, perhaps you'd like to describe what you brought in for us today? Uh, well, I believe it's a Japanese type of hand warmer. Is it an hibachi or something like that? Hibachi, that's yeah. right. That's what it's called. I've had it for about 20 years, but it's never been used or anything. It was just... I bought it and... Um, just put it away. I uh, bought it where? In a, in a I shop? I bought it at auction? Harrogate at an antique fair. I was just walking past a stand and it was on the floor and I just said to the man, what's that on there? Because he had his other bronzes on it and he said, I've just bought it an hour ago and it had part of a wasp nest in it and everything, so he quickly tried to clean it and I just... Bought it before, bought it, before it. it even got to the stand. Yeah, because I like the deer on it. Well, that's right. I mean, that, that, that's the... It, it was it's... the engraved, you know, how it's engraved. I just thought it was very nice. Yeah, if we have a look, let's have a look at the deer, because they're super, aren't they? Yeah. Deer on the top here. And also, it's slightly out of, out of shape. And we have deer round the bowl as well. It's made of bronze, as you know. Yeah. Late 19th century. And they used to burn charcoal in these. And I, I think it was for warming, as you say, for hand warming or warming themselves yeah. around it. Let's just have a look underneath. And here we see it signed. Now, I don't know who it's signed by, but quite a nice signature on there. Well, a well-signed um, piece. Right, let's put somebody on the table. How are you going to put it down? 20, 40. Will you shout and I put down too much? Please. <laughs> 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80. Is it not worth a little bit more? Well, I, I'm going to raise my offer to £200, Anne, but I think okay. that's getting pretty close to, to my limit. OK, let me tell you what the independent valuers say and the auctioneer, which will give you a guide. It's in lovely condition, except that the lid has had a knock and it squeezes in a little bit yes. and that wants a little bit of attention, which is not as easy as it might look to do. Two to three hundred pounds was the best estimate. Perhaps you should ask David, would he like to tempt you just a little bit rather than go off to the auction and make those nasty dealers pay a little bit more money. Right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. But I am a nasty dealer. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Anne. I'll put a little bit more money down. I'm going to put one more 20 down, Anne. Right. 220. Right. And that's my lot, I'm afraid. And that's it. Yeah. Right, thank you very much, then. Yes. Right, yeah. right. thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Behind the scenes, we've got a team of experts. They check and inspect every single item before it's placed in front of our dealers. And it's their independent valuation that you see coming up on your screen. Thank you, David. Now, let's zoom in onto Ian's table. Hi, I'm Ian. And I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. A magnifying glass mounted in silver. 
Could you tell us a little bit about it? How you got oh. it? Or? Well, the silversmith is George Jensen. So it's by George Jensen. Yeah, yeah. I believe it's rock crystal. Yes, it's rock setting, crystal. Yeah, setting yeah. silver. I'll just have a look at it. Just have a look at the hallmark and see what it says. So it's just mark the hallmark of George Jensen and then Torin and a, a number. For me, it's very modern. It's a very, you know, very modern piece. In my shop, it's not going to be an extremely desirable piece. But I think it's attractive, and I think it's very saleable. Um, I'm going to gauge my pricing on what I might be able to sell it for. Okay? So let's say 50, 100 pounds. More, please. And how much more are you looking for? Just more, please. Well, I would go another 50. But I think that's where I would stop. What do you think of that? <laughs> I think I'd still want more. You still want more? <laughs> what was catching my eye <laughs> was... I know. You see? Unbelievable. See, so... Not many diamonds here. A bit of gold and a bit of silver. A bit more diamonds <laughs> over here. But perhaps like-minded, might, one might think. OK, let's get down to the goods. £150 is on the table. Now, what's it worth? Well, the independent value was, say, 150 to 250. The question is, can you do better by gambling and going to auction? There's a reasonable chance because George Jensen can attract a lot of private purchasers as well as dealers. A realistic offer, but there is a gamble if you want to take it. That choice is up to you. You know what's going to happen? They'll be swapping. <laughs> They'll be trading jewellery. Thank you, David. So it's entirely up to you whether you take my offer or you want to gamble it. You know, um, how do you feel? I'll be accepting the 150. You want to take it to auction? I would take it to auction, and given the fact that it is at George Jensen. Jensen, yeah. and see what happens. See and what I hope you enjoy the auction and it makes you a lot of money. OK? Yeah. Yes. So good luck and thanks once again for Thank being here, Tom. Thank, Thank you very much. Well, the magnifier has hit the sale room, but will we see a bigger profit under the hammer? Where did you buy it from? I bought it from a chain of pawnbrokers. So you went into a local pawnbroker? I saw it in the window. Right. What did they ask you for this small rock crystal magnifier with a George Jensen silver mark on it? £4.99. Manager's special. Tell you what, that sounds cheap as chips to me. First of all, George Jensen, you know, highly collectible. Not a lot of silver there, but four ninety nine. Why didn't you take a hundred and forty five pound profit? Well, we advised to take one fifty to two fifty. Okay. Should he have taken the one fifty? Well, we're going to find out. It's coming up now. Start me off somewhere. A couple of hundred pounds for it. One hundred pounds. One hundred bid. Ten. Twenty. 130, 140, 150. Commission's out, it's with the lady in the audience. At 150. Any further interest now on the net 160. No? Internet's coming in on it. Still cheap, you know. 160, we're on the net and selling. OK, £160, but there is commission to deduct. Leaves you with £136. Now, what's your thoughts? I'm very happy with that, seeing it only cost £4.99. OK. You've run the gambit. You turned down the original bid, which was a very good offer of 150. On the day, marginally, the dealer's day with Ian at 150 was the real deal. Back in the dealer's den, Jack's popped onto Cheryl's table for a bit of a natter over his tea set. Where did you get the tea set from, Jack? We used to, we used to 1971, we had a garage of selling cars. Mm -hmm. And some bloke walked in one day and asked me, if, well, would I buy it for him? And I jumped at it and bought it. I didn't even look at it. <laughs> I didn't even examine it. I knew it was a tea set and uh, I just bought it. So you, you just, just fancied it. buying yeah. it yeah. and uh, yeah. there we are. That's right. And why are you thinking of selling it? Well, it's been in a filing cabinet for about the last ten years and we don't use it. You're not using it? No. Fed up of cleaning it? Well, I don't clean it, I like cleaning it. 
So you thought you'd bring it along yeah. today and see what its value is. Yeah. Um, have a quick look for the silver mark. So here it is here. It's quite late, it's 1965. So for us in the antique trade, it's, it's not a, an antique no. piece, it's fairly late. Um, quite a common style, this. Although it's nice because it's four pieces, it's quite a plain set. Mm -hmm. um, silver's doing very well at the moment, but like yourself, people aren't using these things, are they? Well, Fed yeah. up of cleaning That's and correct. we're yeah. all leading yeah. a simpler life now. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get some cash out, shall I, and yeah. see, see if I can buy it off you today. Yeah. Okay, let's have a go. Right, 50, 100. 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. Am I getting warm? You're nowhere near. Nowhere near. Okay. 550, 600, 650, 700. Any warmer? No. no. Okay. So, 20, 40, 60, 80, 800. 20, 40, 60, 80, 900. We're nearly falling off the table here. No, carry on, we're off the table. 900 pounds. No, no. no. Okay. Set another pile. 20, 40, 60, 80, 1,000 pounds. It's got to be a bit more than that. It's going to be a bit more. Mm -hmm. Jack, I'm out at 1,000 pounds. What would you like to do? There's 1,000 pounds in cash. You'd probably have to get another 150-ish pounds on top of that at auction to return you 1,000 pounds. Um, the choice is yours. You can have a day out at the sale with David, or there's a thousand pounds in cash to take now today. What would you like to do? I'll do the deal. You'd like to do the yeah. deal. We'll shake Thank hands. You. Thank you. Now you can tell me what did you give for the tea? Twenty-five pounds. Well, you're in good profit there. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, one lovely car, one careful <laughs> owner. It must be in good nick. Uh, does it work? It, it did work. Hmm, will David Tupman drive off as its new owner? Find out in a moment. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Bury in Greater Manchester. How's you do? I'm David. I'm Jeff. Jeff, uh, did you drive here today in this one, Jeff, or is this? Uh... Well, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> this one, my missus bought for my son, I think. It's been in, in the house for yonks. But, but did she buy it for, for him when he was a little boy? Yeah, yeah. And how old is he roughly now? Maybe about 38. 38. So it's going to be about 30 years old. Oh yeah. Well, let's look underneath. And here we have, it's made by Schuko, and it's Mercedes, made in West Germany. And it's got a, a, a number here, which is 1229. I think that's part of the 1000 series that were made in the 60s, right, right. early 70s. Mm -hmm. Made in West Germany, of course, now amalgamated. So yeah. it dates it pretty much exactly. But it's hardly got a scratch on it at all, has no, it? No, no. Uh, does it work? It, it did work. Well, well I... obviously it worked. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We, uh, um, if, if we look underneath, it's obviously got the the key mechanism. You've got a. You've I've got, got, a, got key. a key. Yeah. You've got the key. It's not original though. Not the original key. Okay, let's put that down. There's a little handle up front there. Yeah. Turn that, right. and it used to just shake yeah. as though it's setting off. Then you push one of these levers, um, either that one which lifts it up, and then it. We'll move forward. Oh, well, you're right. So I'm going to put a little bit of money on the table. Fine. And see where we're going to do. I'm going to put down 20, 30 pounds. No, no. What if I put down 
an extra twenty pounds. So we've got fifty pounds on the table. You're tempting me. I think fifty pounds is going to be about about it for me. Yeah. Not just a wee bit. I think David's going to. Well, I think what you've got there, Jeffrey, is very attractive. The independent valuation is about fifty to seventy pounds. Right. A nice toy in nice condition, not a great deal of age with it, but rather nice for someone like David's desk, which he'll be able to look at it and play with it and things like that. So, probably have to look at it to so on his desk, yeah. I think what's on the table is a fair price and that's what it's worth. So what do you think, Jeffrey? I'm gonna take David's advice and deal. I think you've done the right thing. Right. Thank you very much indeed yeah. for bringing it in. Let's head over to Cheryl's table, where Tracy and Margaret are not keeping it in the family. So, are you ladies related? I'm her auntie. Right. So, tell me what you've brought along today. Well, it's my stepdad's um, uncle's stuff. Um, he's had him for uh, many, many years. I can't believe you want to sell it, though, or part with it. He doesn't really want to, um, but it'd be no use to us, because it was his family. This is the gentleman here, is it, in the photograph? It is, yeah, yeah. OK. So... What was he doing here? Well, he went off to war in the First World War when he was 25 um, and he died and th these things were actually sent to his mum and dad when he passed on. And, and this one here, um, is this signed by the king? Is it this is, king yeah. George? yeah. So the medals, he won yeah. these for, do we, do we know? Just for his taking part in the actual, in the war, you know, uh -huh. um, for his bravery and and all that, you know, he was on, like I said, he was only 25 when he died, and he died... 1916, when he Yeah, because died. Um, he seen his, a friend of his being shot, and he went to help him, and as he stood up to go and help, he got shot, so... So it was a, it's a, very bra sad, really. a bravery yeah. thing as well. It's very sad. Okay. And this is, I believe, the death plaque. It is, yeah. Um, he died for freedom and for honour, and then Arthur Benson. I'm going to be honest, medals are not really my thing. I do know that they are doing very, very well in the sale room. Rather than waste your time by putting silly amounts of money down, my advice to you would be to go to auction. But before you make your mind up, David's here. Right, girls, what's the thing to do? Well, first of all, I think Cheryl has been very correct and said to you, this is not my kind of thing. Yeah. And I think she's right by turning this down and allowing you to go to auction because I think the right place for this is the auction. Let me give you an idea what the independent valuers and the auctioneers say. They say 150 to 250, somewhere in that area between them. Yeah. Medals are doing well within the sale room. I don't expect a great deal of money, 150 to 250, but I think it's a nice collection and that's the place to go, so see you at the auction. Hopefully, we'll get a decent price. Well, good advice from David, as always, but Tracy, Margaret, what would you like to do? Take it to auction. Go yes, to auction? Yes. yes. Well, I'm sure you'll do very well. Welcome. Thank good you. luck on the auction day. Thank you. Nice Thank you. to meet you, girls. Thank you. <laughs> Well, no bid from Cheryl means it will be a real deal in the sale room, as long as the medal and memorabilia hit their reserve. David? The estimation which was given by our independent valuers and the auctioneer is 180 to 250, and there is a reserve of 180 pounds. It's coming up now. What's it going to bring? It's a couple of hundred. It's starting at 120 then. 120 bid now with the clerk at 120. At 120. Further bids now, 130, 140, 150, 160, at 170, 180 pounds. We're at 180, we're right on the reserve. 180 pounds and selling, all done and going. Gavel has gone down to 180 quid. Uh, we've got some commission to take away from that. That's going to leave 153 pounds. First of all, Margaret, what do you think? Are you happy with 150? I'm very happy with that, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and Tracy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. The girls are happy, and I think, well, it's not a lot of money considering the circumstances, but the real deal is £153. Coming up, Corrie wants to take away these Chinese vases. 
Go for more money or gamble. Thank you. But how big a dim sum will she have to pay? Find out in a moment. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Berry in Lancashire. It's the final deal of the day, and Simon's hoping Corey will put in an order for his pair of Chinese vases. They've caught the attention of the Duke and auctioneer Max Blackmore. So, what's going to happen here? Do you want to tell me how you came by them? Uh, well, yes, they were, as far as I'm aware, they're originally my grands. Um, my grand passed away some time ago now. Uh, they, he's uh, passed on to my mum, who's... My grand used to have them out on display. My mum, when she got them, pretty much just wrapped them up in, I think, an old curtain or something, and they went up in the loft of the house. I found them during a clear-out, so... OK, well, let's have a look at them. It's a pair, and they're, they're matched. And they're Chinese, made for the export market. These type of vases were made in the second half of the 19th century quite prolifically because of the growth of the middle class in Europe, specifically in England and Northern Europe. Yeah. And the Chinese then made what they thought the Western consumer wanted. So although this is not exactly what the Chinese would have had at home, it's what they felt that the European thought was Chinese. So let's have a look at the decorations. Basic white, and you've got panels. And this panel here has got a scene with a lady and her children, and more children playing. They're outside. And let's move it slightly round. And now we've got a lovely panel, purely decorative. Peony roses and songbirds and butterflies. And again, we've got a lovely family scene. Again, you've got several women and a servant, and children again in their garden and a screen. So very, very decorative, lots of detail. And the handles are sort of dragons or dogs of foe gilded. So overall, very highly decorated. And they're in reasonable condition. So let's look underneath and see if there's a mark. No, there's no mark. Is there do you know if the other one's no, marked? No, there, there is no marks on them, none that I've seen anyway. Underneath there is a star crack, which takes away from the value, obviously, any damage. And they come on a pair of bases, which are a little bit later, maybe, but they suit them very nicely. Max, now a pair of Cantonese vases. The market in Chinese antiques in the Far East, in particular in mainland China, has started to rise. Oh, yes. Are you finding this in the sale room? Oh, most certainly, yes, yes. We recently sold a little Buddha figure, only 1930s, um, China one. Um, I would have thought it was worth about £100. We sold it for about £800. Lenny. So that just shows you, and that is my dilemma whilst talking to our seller. The independent valuers have gone very conservative. They've said 250 to 350. What's your estimation? I said 450 to 600. But would it surprise you that if on the day it got could, over the 600? They could make another couple of hundred pounds on the day. That's just the way the market is. Let's see what our dealer puts on the table to tempt him with. 50. OK. It's the right colour, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the right colour, those, yeah. 100. But they look nice when there's plenty of them down together, yeah. Oh, a little trail <laughs> of them. 150. 200. OK. Still a blank face. Still a blank face, yeah. I don't need to run out of room, so you might need to um, put them closer oh, like, together. Yeah, <laughs> tidy them up a bit. Yeah, yeah. We've got 250 on the table. 300. Change of colour. Oh, yeah, change of 320. colour. 320. Yeah. You've got 340 on the table there. Okay. And we've got David coming in. Well, I've come in here. As we all know, the market in Chinese objects is now starting to... The dragon is starting to really get moving again. And I'm going to say to you, in my opinion, you have a better chance in auction. Clean, quality desirable goods of the moment. So, go for more money or gamble. Thank you. Corrie's keen to have them, but how much cash is she prepared to lay down? Now, it's me that's going to gamble. Right. So, if I take the 40 away, you 
got 300 on the table there. 350. 400. If I put 450 on the table, you're going to have to get 500 at auction. As I expected, you are sat down with an intelligent, smart dealer. A dealer that knows this business, wants to buy at a keen price if the opportunity arises. £450 there now. It is of my opinion there is a good chance of getting more, but we're getting close to it. So I'm going to say, <laughs> is that it? Are you prepared to speculate that bit more? 20 so what have we got there now? We've got 470 on the table. Not a bad offer, but every chance you can get more at the auction, but you must make that decision. <laughs> Cash on the table, you walk away with it, no risk. Well, I tell you what, if you put that other blue note that you had out before that you've uh, since put back in your uh, purse or coat, if you put that back out there, then we'll do a deal. So we're at 490. Yes. And it'll be a deal then. It'll be a deal. At four you nights. are squeezing me to every last penny. You know that, don't well, you? Well, I'm only here once, so why not? Go on. We have I think a deal. my mum will be pleased with that, yeah. Thank you. Well done, Simon. You did well there, but how did our dealers do today? Dave is having the Japanese hibachi restored and his son sold the toy car on the internet for £65. Dealing in the jeans, I think. Ian's one buy today, the candlesticks, remain unsold. Cheryl offloaded the silver tea set for £1,100, but she still has her other silver buy, the brooch. And our Cory? Well, swings and roundabouts. She swapped the vases for an assortment of fans worth £500. But she only sold the teapot for 260. It's the biggest loss she's ever made. I bet you need a cup of tea after that one, Corrie. <laughs> if you'd like to get the real deal for your antiques and collectibles, log on to our website at itv.com to find out when we're visiting your area. Come along to the show and maybe you could be a happy seller too. <laughs> We've had a great day here in the sale room. There's been lots of action, just the way we like it. Lots of bidding and lots of buying. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.